Are you tired of a boring look of flowers in a vase? Are you interested in creating a more dramatic look of the arrangement? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful flower arrangement in a tall vase. Coming up. Welcome to I Love Ikebana. I'm Akemi Sagawa, Sogit School Ikebana instructor. On this channel, I share with you Ikebana tutorials and practical tips for your arrangement. The shape of a flower base is usually vertical. One problem though is that if you simply put branches to touch the bottom, the maximum space you can show flowers is between these two lines very limited. No wonder the arrangement looks boring. If you want to make your arrangement more dramatic, you want to keep the stem without falling to touch the bottom of the vase. How do you do that? With a vase this tall, Kenzan doesn't work. Instead, we use a supporting stick called soegi. It's an extra branch, cut a little bit shorter than the height of the vase. Also, you need ikebana scissors and a hand towel to wipe off scissors, a small bowl filled with water, and a pitcher to fill the vase with water. Today's materials are yew branches and chrysanthemum flowers. The same as with the shallow container, the length of the stems are determined in relation to the size of the vase. The longest main stem is called shin. Shin is height plus width of the vase times 1.5 to 2. But you can't cut it here. That's how long the stem is shown from the rim of the vase. You have to add the length of the hidden part in the vase. Hold shin outside the vase at the angle you want to position it. If you want to place shin like this angle, this is how long the stem should be hidden in the vase. Determining the angle at which the end of the branch touches the inside of the vase and cut the branch at that angle. You want to maximize the surface of the stem that touches the inside wall of the vase. In order to place shin at this desired position, you use soegi, a supporting stick. Hold soegi and shin outside the vase and get the idea of at what point the two lines intersect. Split the top end of soegi a little further than the crossing point. Also, split the end of shin. Interlock shin and soegi and place them in the vase. Make sure the end of soegi touches the bottom of the vase and the end of shin touches the inner wall of the vase. This is without soegi. This is with soegi. The direction, the energy flow. Can you see the difference? Next, cut and place the second longest main stem, soe. Soe is about three quarters of shin. Don't forget to add the length of the hidden part. 
Your branches are pretty flexible. You can bend the branch to create a line that you desire. Place sui at a more slanting angle than shin. In order to do so, split the tip and interlock with shin or soegi. See how soe is interlocked with soegi. Then cut and place the shortest main stem, hikai. Today, I will use chrysanthemum for hikai. Hikai is about half to two-thirds of soy. Place it on the right side, almost horizontally. You pat the stem first so that the stem doesn't snap when you bend it. Place the stem with the bent tip against the back wall of the vase. Now, the basic structure of your arrangement is created with shin, soe, and hikai. Any stem other than the three main stems are called jushi, or subordinate stems. After the basic structure is created, let's add a focal point with another flower. Don't forget to cut the tip under water. Place additional flowers and stems wherever you think it's appropriate. Place a shorter flower in the back in order to create depth. Bonus! By keeping the longest stem, shin, intact, but by changing the positions of soe and hikai, you can enjoy various expressions of arrangement. Which one do you like best? A simple stick can do such a wonder. That's one of the fun part of studying Ikebana. If you have any question or would like to know more about Sogetsu Ikebana, please write in the comment area down below. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.